Tinkertown just dropped in early access and here I am already with tips to become the magical lands mighty overlord. Hi, I'm Ipar from Minigame Guides and here's everything you need to know about Tinkertown. This may not be a racing game, but speed is everything. Now boot upgrades are worth getting because they increase your movement speed drastically. Now you will be traveling to different biomes that the game has to offer, so some extra movement speed will go a long way. Now right now the game doesn't show any tooltips showcasing the stats of each armor piece, but boots will pretty much always boost your movement speed, so don't be afraid to go wild on getting the next upgrade for them. When night arrives, enemies arrive with it. Now enemies will start respawning, skeletons will start walking around and slimes are jumping all over the place. But the biggest reason why you would want to head outside is to kill all the bats that you can find. Now they drop their bat wings when they die, which is a primary resource to craft leather, which is used for every single armor upgrade. So basically, if you see a bat, kill it. It may be all the Assassin's Creed Valhalla that I've been playing, but I can't help myself when I see an enemy camp. Just raid every goblin camp that you encounter. Now the bonfire in the middle holds a piece of meat which will refill your entire health pool. Destroying their huts and tanner will draw bad wings and strings. Just release your inner viking and go nuts and loot everything. Tinkertown has a building system which is very similar to the survivalists from Team 17, but you can create some very cool looking towns, forward bases, as long as your imagination can come up with it. But no one wants enemies in their camp, so be sure to place down some torches and candles to prevent enemies from spawning in the middle of your town square. Now as we're talking about the building aspect, I want to quickly mention the shovel. Now if you place down the floors and walls, grass will still tend to come through the floor or the sides of the walls. Now this may be fixed in the future, but right now it's still an issue. For that reason I want to advise removing all the grass first with a shovel and only after doing that placing down your walls and floors. And you may also want to place a floor under your walls, because otherwise you will have this little line of dirt in your rooms, which really really annoyed me. Let's start talking about upgrading your gear and tools. Now the order of tool upgrades goes like this. Wood, stone, copper, iron, silver, gold. Now all except silver and gold can be found in your starting biome, the forest area. You don't need to prioritize getting every gear piece of each type, as you can basically get the top tier pickaxe and axe in less than 3 hours. Now just focus on constantly upgrading your pickaxe, because it's your most important tool. You can basically chomp down any tree you want with the starting axe, but it will just take a while. But you can't mine iron if you have a stone axe, you can't mine gold if you have an iron pickaxe. So just make sure to always spend your very first bars of each tier on your pickaxe, so you can get up to the next tier really quickly. Now the world of Tinkertown can be quite huge and easy to get lost in, especially since every world is procedurally generated. So for that reason just use the little house symbol on your map to navigate the world. The house indicates the place that you actually just started off with the game. It's a very fixed point that will always be displayed on your minimap, so let it just be your north star if you will. If you decide to make a forward base or some other reason you want to change your spawn location, you can just build a bed and just place it down, use it and that will be your new spawn point for the next time you die. Our hero can swim and water is all over the place. Now that could be an issue. Now to be able to cross rivers and lakes, just craft some wooden planks. They are cheap and they can be crafted without a workbench. Just place them over the water and you will have yourself a little bridge. Now personally I made a bridge on all rivers that are exactly north, east, south and west of my house. That way you will always have a bridge in the future even when you don't have room in your inventory for some wooden planks. If you have any more tips of your own, please share them in the comments down below. And if you found this guide useful, please give the video a thumbs up so other people can find it too. And if you like getting the best guides for your favorite in the games, 
be sure to subscribe because it's what we're all about here at Indie Game Guides. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.